According to the Border Patrol, more than 57,000 unaccompanied children have entered the U.S. illegally this year. That number is expected to grow to 90,000 by the end of the year and 140,000 by the end of next year. These startling facts speak for themselves. Swift and dramatic action, both on the part of Congress and the administration, is needed. We know that most children, or why most children, are coming. America offers more opportunity than the countries from which they are fleeing. Most of these children hope to be reunited with a parent or a relative. Many just hope to blend into the U.S. and to stay for an indefinite period of time. I understand that. I understand the, advent, the incentive to be in the United States, but we cannot simply allow this con to continue. According to reports about a recent White House meeting, uh, the President uh, had a meeting with some people concerned about this wave of people coming from Central America. The President said that sometimes there is an inherent injustice to where you are born, then no President can solve that. He, reported, uh, he reportedly said that uh, Presidents must send the message that you just can't show up at the border, plead for asylum uh, or refugee status, and hope to get it. The President is quoted as saying, quote, then anyone can come in, and it means that effectively we don't have any kind of system. We are a nation with borders that must be enforced, end quote. The President is right. If the reckless journey from Central America or Mexico or any other country to the U.S. is met with, at worst, long stays in the U.S., and at best, long stays coupled with family reunification, these crossings will continue. It's just human nature. Even if every child and every adult is ultimately deported six months or a year from now, it will be too late. For the intervening months, the message is, make it to the U.S. and you can stay. The incentives must change. When planes full of those who crossed are returned, people in those countries will stop paying smugglers thousands of dollars to take their children north. Incentives work, and in this case, it may be the only way. So what are we to do? At one point, the President asked Congress for some legal authority. Congress should give it to him. In addition, Senator McCain and I will offer a bill that will hinge U.S. foreign aid to Central American countries on their response to this situation. Providing for refugee processing in those countries, it will heighten penalties for human trafficking, and it will expedite the removal of those who are here without a legitimate claim. The President did ask for funds to deal with the crisis, uh, although he asked uh, for those funds uh, without reforms. I'm pleased to say that there appears to be a growing consensus that any funding request in a supplemental bill should include substantive reforms that both deal with the existing circumstances that we're in, uh, as well as heading off future impacts. In the meantime, the administration has at its discretion the ability to dramatically stem this wave of crossings. I'd like to talk about a few of these options that the President uh, clearly has right now. First and foremost, the Department of Homeland Security is not required to release unaccompanied children after they have been apprehended. While requiring DHS to transfer them to Health and Human Services within 72 hours, the 2008 trafficking law provides flexibility in, quote, exceptional circumstances. Second, the administration has at, has a, at its discretion the ability to expedite or trim the timelines of hearings for unaccompanied children. For example, the President can direct the Department of Justice to not agree to continuances for these hearings. He should do that as well. Third, for children already released to HHS, the President can direct HHS to not place children automatically uh, with their families, or parents, or family members. The 2008 Trafficking Protection Law requires the administration to place children in the, quote, least restrictive setting in their best interest. The administration has discretion uh, to, to, as to what constitutes least restrictive setting. If we acknowledge, as the President has, that most of these children will not be able to stay in the U.S., 
Uh, why would we place them with a parent or guardian only to take them from that parent or guardian months or years later? That, I would submit, is not in their best interest. I'm certain that there are those who will object to these actions if taken by the President, but I would submit uh, that we should do everything we can to ensure that another 30,000, 60,000, 100,000 children do not stream north on this dangerous jury, journey. The real question is, what wouldn't we do uh, to prevent that from happening? The current situa situation is not humane at all to allow these children to come forward this way. Let me be clear, uh, those seeking asylum, uh, there will be many uh, who will have a colorable claim, a legitimate claim of persecution. Nobody is talking about shutting down the avenues to submit or to have such a claim. There will be, still be protections for genuine asylum seekers. It is best uh, for those who seek refuge uh, to do so uh, in their own home countries at an American embassy or consulate. Uh, that should at best be done uh, in their own country. And uh, the legislation that we will put forward will uh, provide more resources for that to happen. Earlier this month, the President's spokesman indicated, indicated that, quote, it's unlikely that most of the kids who go through this process will qualify for humanitarian relief, which is to say that most of them will not have a legal basis to remain in the country. Uh, Cecilia Munoz, the director of the White House Domestic Policy Council, made it clear, quote, if you look at the history of these kinds of cases and apply them to the situation, it seems very unlikely that the majority of those children are going to have the ability to stay in the United States. So here is my primary concern. Despite discretion to do otherwise, the administration continues to provide precisely the goal that those crossing illegally, being allowed to enter the U.S., to be reunited with their families, and staying for an extended period of time, they're allowing these incentives to continue. Despite firm quotes and statements otherwise, the administration's response to the crisis is a case study in sending the wrong message. In his July 8 request for $3.7 billion in supplemental spending related to this crisis, the President stated that his administration would work with Congress to, quote, ensure that they have the legal authority they need, including, quote, providing the Secretary of Homeland Security additional authority to exercise discretion in processing the return and removal of unaccompanied children from these Central American countries, unquote. Uh, more than a week later, uh, with the wave of children crossing illegally every day and increased anger pointed at the issue, it remains anyone's guess at what the President is actually seeking. He didn't uh, ask for any new authority in the funding request just sent up. Uh, in the days after the supplemental request was made, it became clear that nearly $2 billion of the funding request is for the Department of Health and Human Services uh, Department. This is a department that plays no role in deportation, and the department that the administration permits uh, or requires to place those who cross illegally with families inside the United States. Now, Congress needs to do what it can to provide the statutory tools to address this crisis. As I mentioned earlier, a senior senator from Arizona and I will offer a bill uh, in the coming days to do that. In the meantime, the President has the discretion and the authority to act within the law and to follow the law and to offer the right incentives so that we don't have this situation continuing as it is today. I would encourage uh, the President to do so. Uh, with that, I yield back.